wonders on every side Life in marvelous time Life in marvelous time What's up, YouTube? My name is Anson Asaka. I'm the realest blogger in the game, keeping it 100, 100% of the time. Now, today, what I want to do is I'm going to talk about a book that I've read recently. It's called Malcolm X, A Life of Reinvention. It's written by Professor Manny Marable. Now, this is an interesting book. Um, it expands upon the ideas that were um, laid out in the autobiography of Malcolm X. Uh, it goes far beyond uh, what was mentioned in the um, original autobiography. Uh, the thing that I like about this new um, book is that it actually um, relies on some FBI records. Uh, it, it probes some FBI records. And it also goes into greater detail about Malcolm X's uh, personal life. And um, just in general, it, it talks more about the background story, about uh, his family and how they were... Um, Garveyites. It goes into great detail about their involvement in the Marcus Garvey movement, Back to Africa movement. And it also talks about um, even Elijah Muhammad's involvement in that movement at one point in his life. Now, this book raises a lot of interesting questions. Um, the first question, I wish that Manny Marable was alive today. I would ask him uh, several questions about this book. The first thing I would ask him is why did he feel the need to talk about personal matters involving, you know, Malcolm X's love life or in his his wife's um, love life as well. In the book, um, there are allegations that um, when Malcolm X um, early on in his life, before he got involved in the nation, um, Manny Marable actually um, alleges that Malcolm X had uh, a homosexual relationship with with a man. Um, years before his involvement in the Nation of Islam. And I just wondered why was that even necessary? Why would um, Manny Marable feel the need to even um, mention that in his book? Um, and not too long ago, like a couple of weeks ago, I was watching a debate with um, Amiri Baraka and Michael Eric Dyson and uh, Michael Eric Dyson brought up an interesting point. He said that, you know, no one has a problem with Malcolm X um, being a former drug dealer or um, a pimp or a thief or any of that kind of stuff. But people are really, um, you know, up in arms about the idea that Malcolm X could have had some kind of um, homosexual relationship at one point in his life. And I think part of the reason why people are upset about that is because, first of all, it's unsubstantiated. These allegations, you know, there's no proof that Malcolm X was actually involved in, you know, a homosexual relationship uh, with this man. Uh, there's no concrete proof anyway. All we have is innuendos and um, conjecture. Uh, so that's the first thing. And then the second thing is that Malcolm X has projected an image of manhood uh, a strong image of, you know, what it means to be a man, you know, somebody that's willing to speak out, somebody that's willing to speak truth to power, and somebody that's willing to sacrifice their very life to defend their people and their family. And that idea of a strong black man is really, um, you know, it's contrary to, you know, our image of, of, you know, the typical, stereotypical image of a homosexual man as weak and feminine. Uh, so I think that's probably the main reason why a lot of people take issue with the fact that Manny Marable would, um, you know, make these allegations that are, you know, unsubstantiated, where there's no concrete proof that he was um, involved in homosexual relationship. And then also in the book, you know, there's suggestions that Malcolm X, while he was married to Betty Shabazz, would, um, was involved in affairs and um and actually, um, the book accuses um, Betty Shapass of being involved with one of Malcolm X's aides. Now, I don't know. I mean, there's no concrete proof of this. And part of the problem is that they do, you know, as I said before, they rely on, um, I mean, Manny Marable relies on um, a lot of information from uh, the FBI. And, you know, it's possible that um, the information that they provide is um, distorted or, you know, inaccurate. 
So um, my thing is, why why even mention this? Wonders on every side, life in marvelous time. Life in marvelous time. So that's one question that I would ask Manny and Marable. And uh, his book was interesting in that it exposed like a lot of the contradictions within the um, Nation of Islam movement. I mean, it's a movement that, um, uh, you know, talked about self-defense, um, you know, talked about uh, defending against um, police brutality and all that stuff. But then... Um, they go into detail about a, a police brutality incident that took place in Los Angeles and how instead of living or standing up to that, standing by that rhetoric of self-defense and that rhetoric of being, um, you know, standing up against uh, violence and, you know, whenever it manifests itself, instead of actually living up to that rhetoric, um, the Nation of Islam stood down. You know, Malcolm X wanted to retaliate against the police officers that killed uh, a member of the Nation of Islam in Los Angeles and injured several others. But, um, you know, at that time, Elijah Muhammad, um, you know, suggested that they take no action, no retaliation. And, you know, that makes sense from a pragmatic point of view. And, you know, it's obviously logical that, you know, that you, sh you know, shouldn't engage the police in, you know, acts of violence. You know, it's possible that you know, the Nation of Islam would not exist if they had done, you know, engaged in such actions. But that's contrary to the rhetoric that they talked. I mean, while people like Martin Luther King were in the South facing down um, uh, vicious dogs and vicious police and actually standing up against the forces of racism, um, you had, you know, people... Um, that are basically, I mean, they were in a more secure position in the North and they could talk a lot of um, uh, overhyped rhetoric about uh, the right to self-defense and all that kind of stuff. But then when time push came to self, they didn't actually defend themselves. They didn't actually um, stand up to defend themselves. And then